Hi, uh, I'm Akshit, uh, and I'm going to. I'm excited to be presenting our work on multi-sector tree problem with many types. This is joint work with Professor Omar Bespes and Professor Yash Kanoria from Columbia Business School. Okay. So the secretary problem is an online selection problem where you're going to interview a bunch of tea, tea secretaries. And as a recruiter, you want to select the top B candidates. The challenge arises from the fact that these secretaries arrive in an online fashion. And as a decision maker, you can only make irrevocable hire or reject decisions. In this talk, we assume that the abilities of the secretary are drawn independently from a common and known distribution F. And over here, types will refer to the abilities of these secretaries. OK, so to walk you through an example, consider you're going to interview a bunch of seven superheroes, and you want to form a team of three superheroes. At time one, you sample Captain America with an ability of 0.7, and you feel that he's good enough, and you select him. Then you sample Spider-Man with an ability of 0.5, and you feel he's not good enough, and you reject him. And the hiring process continues. After you have exhausted your budget, everyone else is rejected. So under an online policy, you would have selected Captain America, Thor, and Deadpool as your superheroes. However, if you had the ability to look into the future, like Doctor Strange, you would have selected Thor, Groot, and Hulk as your, as your superheroes. And this leads to what we define as regret which is the difference between the hindsight optimal policy and the difference between your policy. So in this example, you accrue a regret of 0.5, and the focus will be on the expected regret. If, the mot if hiring superheroes was not motivation enough, this problem is also related to the online knapsack problem. It's a special case of it with unit weights and IED rewards. If you're coming from an NRM literature, this is a, this is a, you will view it as a single leg revenue management with a selling horizon T, a flight capacity of B, and the types of the different fare classes. This is also closely related to the order fulfillment problem, where imagine that you have two warehouses, and you have some spatially distributed demand. and A demand comes up at some time, and you need to uh, fulfill that demand from one of the warehouses. And this problem can be reduced to a multi-secretary problem. So before I try to motivate my research question, let us first look at what is already known in the space. What we know for discrete distributions, so these are di distributions over a finite support. Award-winning work of Aloto and Govich, in fact, shows that the regret is constant. That is, it does not scale with the time horizon or your budget P. However, the regret can scale with the number of types. On the other extreme, you have this continuous distributions, which I'll refer to as many types. These are distributions with well-defined densities. And recent work of Bray shows that regret for this scales as log of t. However, you need that the density needs to be bounded below for these problems. So you cannot admit densities such as these. Moreover, you, you cannot admit distributions with gaps. And gaps naturally arise in distributions with discrete, uh, in discrete distributions. And most practical problems are actually somewhere in between of these two extreme uh, classes of distribution. So a research question is, how do you interpolate between these two distributions in a unified manner? The algorithmic question is, how does one deal with gaps? And theoretically, you could ask, what are the possible regret scalings in this, uh, for these class of distributions? OK, so if there is something that I would want you to take away from this talk, it is this slide. So we identify that there are essentially two potential drivers of regret, one being the rarity of types, or you can also think of it as the shape of the density function. And we characterize it by a parameter beta. And the other is the presence of gaps or absence of gaps. In the case of no gaps, we show that as your beta increases, the problem becomes harder and harder. So your regret uh, can go all the way from log t to square root t as the, as, the, as the curvature of this distribution increases. Our second insight is that the workhorse policy, which is the certainty equivalent policy, which is uh, a common practice uh, in the literature, is unable to deal with gaps that the regret scales, uh, the, the lower bound on the regret scales as square root t. 
And this leads to our third insight, which is our algorithmic innovation of conservatism with respect to gaps. Using this principle, you can reduce the regret all the way down from square root t to something like log t squared for this example. So the rest of the talk is divided in three parts. We'll first describe the shape being a fundamental driver of regret. Then we realize that dealing with gaps is an algorithmic challenge, which will lead to our algorithmic innovation, which is conservatism with respect to gaps. And the maxim is very simple. It says that if you're close to the gap, you use the gap as the threshold. All right, so as a first step, let me broaden this class of continuous distributions to allow for density to be bounded uh, to be zero at some points. And I'll refer to this as the beta one cluster distribution. So think of beta as characterizing the curvature of your distribution or characterizing the rate of mass the rate of mass accumulation around some points. So when you have beta equal to zero, say you're at point M and you move delta units away from that point M, you, will, you can accrue at least delta units of mass. For beta equal to one, it's delta squared, so on and so forth. So our first result is a, uh, is a lower bound where we show that for any beta, there exists a distribution F beta such that the worst case regret scales as log T if beta is equal to zero, and it scales polynomially in T in case beta is positive. And this exponent in the polynomial increases all the way from zero to half as beta increases. Moreover, we show that this regret scaling is tight, as in there is, uh, there is an algorithm, a certainty equivalent algorithm, such that the regret for this is upper bounded by, uh, by, the, same, by the same scaling, which is log t, and polynomial in T for beta equal to zero and beta positive, respectively. All right, so what is the certainty equivalent control that I've been talking about? So think of, the, think of it as, sol, as you trying to solve some uh, stochastic optimization problem. Obviously, you don't know the realization of these random variables, so the best that you can do or hope to do is consider a deterministic analog where you replace all the random variables by their mean, you solve that problem, and you use that solution to make decisions for your problem. So for the case of discrete distributions, you can solve an LP, and you can reduce the random variables by their means to solve a deterministic LP and use that solution to make your decisions. For the case of beta one continuous distribution, the prescription of the certainty equivalent control is in fact pretty simple. It says at some time t, you have a remaining budget of bt. So you compute a budget ratio, which is the ratio of your remaining time a uh, ratio of your remaining budget to remaining time. This gives you a threshold. And based on this threshold, you decide to hire. If, if the ability is more than the threshold, you hire him. Otherwise, you reject them. So just to recap, uh, for the beta one cluster distribution, we relax the assumption of the density being positively lower bounded. We showed that the shape beta is in fact a fundamental driver of regret. And in fact, an entire spectrum of regret scalings is possible. Moreover, a simple policy like certainty equivalent is in fact optimal. Okay, so now how do you generalize it to deal with gaps? So what we do is we in fact generalize this beta one clustered distribution to beta epsilon not clustered distributions. So think of partitioning your ability space into mass clusters and gaps, where gaps are intervals of positive length with zero mass, and mass clusters are intervals with positive mass. And betas are characterizing the rate at which this mass is being accumulated around the gaps. And epsilon naught is the, uh, is the probability mass on the smallest mass cluster. For the case of discrete distributions, you have that they belong to this class of zero epsilon naught clustered distributions, where epsilon naught is the smallest probability mass on the support. Uh, this is an example of beta equal to one. So uh, let's recall the research question, which is how do you deal with gaps and what are the algorithms that are required? So we saw that the certainty equivalent hammer was a powerful hammer. It was in fact optimal for this beta one clustered distribution. So the first natural question is, okay, how does it do in the case of beta epsilon not clustered distributions? So again, uh, just to recap the certainty equivalent control for distributions with gaps, you will again compute a budget, uh, you'll compute a budget ratio. This will give you a threshold 
and your hiring decision will be based on this threshold. It turns out that the certainty equivalent control is in fact insufficient to deal with gaps. Uh, so you think of the, small, uh, the simplest departure from a uniform distribution and you introduce a gap in between, between one fourth and three fourth, and you consider a budget of half, half the time steps. You can show that the regret in fact scales as uh, at least as uh, omega of square root t. And in fact, the scaling, this same scaling is achievable under a static threshold policy. So certainty equivalent, which is an adaptive policy, does as bad as a static threshold policy. So this tells us that adaptivity uh, is not sufficient and you need something smarter to deal with such distributions. So what is the intuition behind this? So you're gonna solve for some threshold at some time. This is under your policy. Analogously, the offline is also so, uh, is trying to play this game, and it will also have a threshold policy at some time t, where from time t onwards till the end of the horizon, it can see all the arrivals, and it will set some threshold. So you will screw up whenever you have an arrival under which you, you suggest that you should accept, whereas the offline suggests that you should reject. So this, uh, we show that with positive probability, the thresholds will be on the opposite sides of the gap, and this will lead you to make a mistake. While the probability of you making a mistake is small, the cost of making a mistake is high, which is at least as large as the size of the gap, which is some constant. So you have that the expected compensation scales as at least uh, one over square root of the, your remaining time horizon. And since regret is the sum of the compensations over all such times, the cost that you're paying over all time t, uh, periods, summing this leads to a regret of square root t. Okay, so what can we do? What's the fix? The idea is pretty simple. At some time, you solve for this threshold, f inverse, and you perturb this threshold slightly uh, around, this, uh, around a neighborhood of delta t. If you're far away from the gap, you keep using this threshold. You don't make any changes. On the other hand, let's say you, are, you again solve for a threshold and you perturb around this, uh, uh, you perturbed in this neighborhood of delta t, and you find that the gap, the gap in fact lies in this neighborhood. So if you're close to the gap, you will use the threshold as the gap. What I mean by that is that you're gonna shift the, your original threshold in the red line all the way to the threshold in the black, back, uh, black line, and you'll start using that as your threshold to, to make your decisions. And it turns out that for these beta epsilon not clustered distributions, the regret of this conservatism with respect to gaps policy looks very close, uh, uh, almost matches the scaling of the lower bound up to some polylog factors. And in the case where f is a discrete distribution, you have that the regret of this conservatism with respect to policy is actually a constant which scales only as the small uh, size, uh, which is inversely proportional to the size of the smallest mass cluster. So a few remarks are in order. Firstly, we are able to, uh, so we can see that we are able to get the regret all the way down from at least square root t to log t squared uh, for, this, uh, for this distribution. And in fact, this generalizes uh, to any distribution which is in this beta epsilon not clustered class. And since it matches the universal lower bound up to polylog factors, we have that this policy is near optimal. So, uh, so how, how does it work? Recall that an event like this, where your threshold and offline's threshold were on the opposite sides of the gap. This was a problematic event for the certainty equivalent uh, heuristic. So under the certainty equivalent heuristic, it was a positive probability event. However, with our shifting towards the gap, we can show that with the conservatism principle, this becomes a low probability event, which leads to the compensation that the expected cost of your mistake being extremely small due to this event. A more typical event looks like this, where your threshold and the offline threshold are on the same side of the gap. So now your probability of making a mistake is small and the amount and the cost of your mistake is also proportional to the probability of your mistake that you'll make, making your expected compensation extremely small. 
And when you sum this over all time periods, you get that, in fact, it scales as log t squared. OK, so I'll just conclude now. Uh, we started by looking at the problem that discrete distributions and continuous distributions with bounded densities were well studied, but they required different algorithmic ideas. So our research question was, how does one unify and interpolate between these two class of distributions smoothly? We identified that there are two challenges in, involved in this approach. The first being the rarity of types, uh, which is uh, characterized by this parameter beta. And we, in fact, show that this is a fundamental driver of regret, and there is no getting uh, away with it. The other is the presence of gaps. We show that while the presence of gaps uh, lead to avoidable losses, this still requires smarter algorithm design, which led to our algorithmic innovation, which is the conservatism with respect to gaps principle, since it's able, and it's able to deal with a broader class of distributions, such as the beta epsilon one that I described. And as corollaries, we can, in fact, recover the guarantees of these discrete, uh, guarantees for discrete distributions and these bounded continuous distributions. All right. So while we open, uh, while we close the door on a huge, uh, a huge hole in the secretary problem, uh, it does open the door for a few, a lot of other questions. Firstly, the secretary problem is in one dimension. How does one generalize these ideas to higher dimensions? Uh, more fundamentally, the question that we are asking is, how do you think of gaps in higher dimensions? How do they manifest in higher dimensions? And what is the algorithmic approach to deal with these gaps? So uh, what we are looking for, and this has applications for a huge variety of network revenue management problems, which have instances with gaps. One such application is order fulfillment with, two, with multiple warehouses. So now gaps in spatial distributions naturally arise. And this can lead, you to, and this can lead to you incurring large regret. And what we want to see is, how does one deal with these gaps in practical settings? Uh, with this, I'll conclude, and thank you for your attention. Yeah, so thanks, Akshit, for the nice talk. Do we have a question in the audience? What is the multi-secretary uh, problem in higher d dimensions? Like, what is, what is uh, not the regret, but uh, but the value that you uh, have? Is there like a linear function, or yeah? Could you tell me more about what it what it what it means to do it in higher d d dimensions? Actually, before you answer, can can you briefly repeat the question for the online audience? Yeah. Okay. Audience? So I uh, I think the question was, uh, what is the multi-secretary problem in higher dimensions? Uh, so think of uh, an online, uh, think of it as an online knapsack problem, where basically each time you get a reward and you get a consumption vector. So let's say you have a bunch of resources. Each time you get a reward and a consumption vector, and basically you have to decide whether to accept that reward or not. So if you accept that reward, you're going to consume multiple, uh, multiple types of resources. In this case, you're only consuming one resource. So it's a single resource example, and hence d equal to 1. You can generalize this to be consuming multiple such resources. So for that, so when we have one more, I'll, I'll ask that. I think is there a question from the virtual side? Oh, yeah, then maybe you can go ahead. OK, sure. Then um, if the knapsack problem is, is, is uh, hard, uh, should our regret be with respect to the optimal solution or to some like approximate solution? Uh, so wait, uh, when you say NAPSAP problem is hard, what do you mean by hard? Um, do you I thought it was hard, or at least uh, you can't do it like the strongly polynomial time, get NAPSAP. Uh, okay, so this is a very uh, okay. So I'm not I'm not talking about the general NAPSAP problem. So there is a lot of structure here which you can exploit. Uh, as for a na for the general knapsack problem, I am not I'm not even aware if there are regret guarantees which look like these for the general setting. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you. Let's thank the speaker again.